Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, today we are going to discuss about the stages in globalization. We were just covering the unit number 5 in our business environment course and today we will discuss stages in glo globalization. But uh, prior to that, I would like to tell you something related to doing international business. Whenever we, we go for international business, then what happens? Uh, there are some approaches which we use, which we apply. So, these approaches include uh, like the first approach is uh, ethnocentric. Likewise, another stages, some people you may, uh, maybe from you, maybe know. Polycentric. Polycentric approach, okay. The third one is, it is a regiocentric approach. And fourth is, geocentric approach. So, these are the four main approaches which are used by the marketers while going internationally. Suppose you are going to perform your business worldwide, you are going to bring your business in another country, then what will happen? Uh, you will use out of these any one approach. Out of these any one approach. So, what is, what, what is ethnocentric approach? Ethnocentric approach, as the name suggests, it is related to ethnicity. It is related to, uh, means the country where the company is existing, where the main headquarter of the company is existing, that company will focus upon the customers who belong to the same country. It will focus upon the suppliers of the same country. It will focus upon the customers of the same country. Means all the process, all the operations of the company will run within the country. They are not going to entertain other countries. They are just going to percept all and everything regarding that business by focusing upon at that domestic country only. So, that is ethnocentric approach of uh, business. That is ethnocentric approach. And what is polycentric approach? What is polycentric approach? Poly means many. Centric means focusing. So, focusing on many. Focusing on many means, uh, suppose we have a business in India and this firm belongs to India and uh, we are moving to another country like uh, we just want to bring our business to America or we, we just want to bring our business to uh, Germany. In Germany, if we are going, so we are not going to cater to the customers according to the needs of the Indians. We will target the German customers according to their own needs, according to their own perceptions. So, it will depend upon the country. Wherever we are going, we will prepare our marketing mix. Marketing mix means? There are four P's in marketing mix, product, place, price, promotion. In ethnocentric approach, what happens? The marketing mix depends upon the uh, customers of the country, on the people of the country, the domestic country. But if we are going poly, through polycentric approach, then what will happen? We will focus upon different countries or we can say it is like a multi-domestic company, multi-domestic. Suppose if we are in India, we are going to target the customers of India. So, we will prepare our marketing mix according to the customers of India. And if you are going to do our business in uh, Germany, then we will prepare our marketing mix according to the customers of Germany. Okay. So, that is polycentric approach. Means wherever we are going, we will prepare our marketing mix according to the customers of that specific country. And uh, then comes regiocentric approach. In regiocentric approach, what happens? In regiocentric, regio means it is related to region. It is region. Okay, then targeting some different regions. Suppose there is a region uh, in, in African country, in, Af in any African country, you are going to have a base or you, are ju you just want to open an office or a branch of your company in Africa. Then by uh, establishing your office in, uh, African, in any African country, you are going to cover all nearby regional countries which are related to African region. Okay. We will target their customers and we will cater their customers by utilizing that our branch office in Africa. So, that is that is known as regiocentric approach. And what is geocentric? Geo means? Geo is related to entire earth. Okay. That is related to entire earth. So, we are focusing on entire earth. Our entire earth 
that is considered as a single country. In geocentric, we consider the entire world as a single country and on focusing on single country, for us then the customers become all the people of the entire world. For our, for our purpose, in geocentric approach, all the, the suppliers become the suppliers become all the all the suppliers of the uh, of the different countries of the entire world so we are considering the entire world as a single entity or a single country and after that we are per performing our all marketing activities according to that so that is geocentric approach so these are the four basic approaches which are being utilized in doing business internationally so now we move to another topic that we have to cover that is stages in globalization Uh, another name for stages in either we say stages in globalization or we can say internationalization of our business. Someone is doing its business in a single country and now he wants to move their business in different countries. That is known as internationalization. So here stages in globalization includes the same thing which is uh, which comes under internationalization. So the first stage and this is that is domestic company. The second stage is international company. Third comes multinational. Fourth is it's global. And fifth is transnational. So these are the five stages in globalization. Are you getting? So these are the five stages. Suppose you have a business in India and you want to move your business, you want to develop or establish your business worldwide. So first stage that you will have to do, that you will have to follow, that is domestic company. First of all, you will have to establish a domestic com company in your domestic country. So after that you can move to internationalization of your company. You can move to another country and further you can go for multinational company and then you can be uh, you can work globally and finally you will be you can establish yourself as a transnational company. So what is a domestic company first of all? What is domestic company? Anybody? Which approach can be utilized here? Okay. The four approaches which we have discussed earlier, the four approaches, ethnocentric, polycentric, regiocentric and geocentric. Out of these four, which approach will be utilized here? That is ethnocentric. Ethnocentric means focusing upon the same domestic country from the customers, suppliers and all people who are related to business that will be related to only domestic country only. Okay. So what about the domestic company? So we can simply, we can simply say that domestic company has a boundary, it works within the country, it focuses upon all the people who are related to that country, okay. They consider their people, either they are employees, they are, uh, they are suppliers or they are customers. They just focus upon all those people, they don't consider the people from outside the country. So that is the domestic company. Can you suggest any name of any domestic company? Yes, Can you suggest any example of domestic company? Reliance. Nestle? Reliance. 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 It can be said as a domestic company, perhaps uh, this confusion is due to because we have not discussed these companies. Because Reliance has moved from India to other countries also. So it will not, it is a domestic company. It is very obvious that any company which is multinational, it would be a domestic company also. It would be a domestic company. But can you uh, name any local company which works within India only? That is domestic. Patanjali. Patanjali is a? domestic company only okay it is focusing upon india indian customers only right now right now it has not gone for internationalization so domestic company it is working within the boundaries only within the boundaries of india only okay the second is international company in domestic company what happened 
in domestic company uh, the marketer just prepare a marketing mix according to the customers of india okay they take supply of raw material from indian suppliers they hire employees from india only so they are totally focusing upon indian people only okay and uh, in international company so there is a marketing mix there is a marketing mix which has been prepared for indian customers which has been prepared for domestic customers only marketing mix are you, are you getting yes. marketing mix so then uh, international company what happens suppose we are performing our business within the boundaries of india and uh, our target customer uh, were around uh, 10 lakh people and we have catered the need of almost around 10 lakh people now we have almost provided our products to the entire uh, target market within india now what can we do to just grow we can move to other countries we can cross the boundary of india so international companies that company which was working earlier in the domestic location but just to grow or just to expand it moves to other countries but the specific thing which is sticked with the international company is that it keeps its marketing mix same if it is moving in another country also but it is not changing its marketing mix its marketing mix is same as earlier as it was in india it is not going to change its marketing mix suppose patanjali is here in in india it has its, uh, it has its unique products and now it wants to internationalize its company so if it moves to other countries also it will it will provide them means the customers of other countries the same products which were which it was selling within india so moving from one country to another just for the sake of uh, expansion of your business or growing the business with same products with same marketing mix that is international company that is international company and now there is a difference between international and multinational multinational means multi means many national means countries okay in multinational companies how it is different from the second one from international company multinational company is different from international company in such a way that in multinational companies the marketing mix is different for different countries in international companies the marketing mix is not different the marketing mix which was prepared for domestic company the same was provided in the host country also okay but in multinational companies what happens uh, the domestic company just establish its branches its different offices or its subsidiaries in different countries and that subsidiary or branches they work upon the customers of that specific country and according to those customers they just prepare their marketing mix so they have different marketing mix in multi in multinational companies they have different marketing mix here they have same marketing mix okay so this is the main difference within international and multinational both companies are uh, working across the boundaries of the domestic country but the difference lies in targeting the customer in the marketing mix it utilizes same marketing mix as domestic country but it doesn't utilize it works according to the need of the specific country okay now what about the global company then what is the global company actually these are the stages if this is an international company then it would be a domestic company also this is the subset of this one okay it is a multinational company but it is not it is not necessary that the multinational company will also be an international company because in international the same marketing mix was used but in mnc the same marketing mix are, is not used in global company what happens global company is same as like uh, domestic company first is started its business from the domestic country then it moved to other countries for the sake of expansion and it uses different marketing mix according to the different countries but uh, global companies are those companies it may be of two types it may be of it may be under, understood in two ways either it produces produces in one country or we can say domestic 
domestic country and uh, sells in different countries one category may be this okay one category may be this another category may be produces in different countries but sells in domestic country are you getting global companies are those companies where the production is done in the domestic country itself but the products are sold in different countries of the world or it may be the production may be done in different countries worldwide but it would be sold in domestic country only so uh, do you know any example of such type of companies any example which produces in one country but sells in other countries gap is for what for first one or for second one for b1 for b the example is given by fazilah this gap gap is a fashion, it is related to fashion industry okay so what happens what gap does gap uh, actually uh, utilizes different resources from all around the one world in different countries from wherever they find raw material at cheaper rates they get it from there if they if they want to get it stitched they just get it stitched from those countries where they get it cheaper and quality wise and then finally they sells in us only gap products are sold in us only they don't they doesn't sell in different countries they sell they manufactures it in different countries but sells in us only example gap in us okay and what about this any name dr reddies dr reddies products are manufactured where in america in india these are manufactured in india but these are sold in all over the world patanjali products are being being produced in india, india. but in future it may be sold in different countries okay and uh, there is another example like harley davidson the bikes of harley and davidson which are manufactured in united states united states but these are sold worldwide in lucknow also there is a showroom of harley davidson so these are the different examples so this is the global company so got it yes. transnational company what are transnational companies tncs tncs transnational companies what is the difference between multinational and transnational transnational companies are those companies which considers or first of all we can say it utilizes the approach of which approach it utilizes it it utilizes geocentric approach geocentric approach we have studied four approaches the fourth one in geocentric approach what happens in geocentric approach what happens in geocentric approach it is considered the entire world is considered as a one country as a single country single country means wherever from where we we want raw material we will buy it from where we want to process it we will get it processed from where we want to sell it we will sell, we will sell it there so entire world is considered as a single country so in this way what happens these are those companies which uh, have their offices anywhere worldwide and according to their need of manufacturing they just utilize they just find out the resources different resources from different places from the world at cheaper rates and they just transform it into a very good quality product so that it can be given to consumers 
at economical rates with best quality okay so is there any any example which you know about like there is an example of coke there is an example of pepsi these are the transnational companies they acquire everything from all over the world wherever they find it cheaper they just uh, find it from there lenovo is another example lenovo also do the same thing so uh, this is known as transnational company its basic approach is they consider entire world as a single country and according to that they utilizes all the resources either it is raw, raw material either it is human resource either it is different uh, processes or information or whatever things they just use it according to their needs but they consider it from all over the world so these are the five stages which comes under the globalization through this globalization occurs globalization means globalization means that is borderless world borderless world how just for the sake of social and economic integration it is social economic integration process where we want such type of world where we can move freely and we can uh, have our business there and we can meet different people there so in this manner we can go for globalization okay